So take me home, I'll drift away You'll take me away, hey, hey So my name is Marissa Vasiri and I'm president and founder of the Jana Marie Foundation. Um, we're a nonprofit organization that harnesses the power of creative expression and dialogue to spark conversations, build connections, and promote mental health and well-being, especially among young people and their communities. It's hard to imagine that 12 years ago, my sister Jana died by suicide. And you know, when I think back to those times, I remember the exact moment that it happened. I remember the phone calls that I received. I remember where I was, and that's what trauma does to us. It becomes ingrained in our minds. But I also remember the reflections that came after those moments. The thinking about growing up here in Center County and about the ways that we didn't always talk about mental health or suicide for those matters. I think about Jana's journey and how she often had challenges that she had to overcome. And I think about those times where people made connections with us. After, we passed, after Jana passed away, um, this stranger at the time, a couple of days, weeks later, came to my parents' house. I was living down in Philadelphia at the time and obviously very worried about my family up here. And this individual came with a basket of goodies. And in that basket were candles and books and journals and just little things. But what they didn't realize is the impact that those things make. When we talk about stigmatized deaths, we don't always have those times or places that we can share their names or where we can truly remember them for who they are. At times, it's an isolating experience because friends and even sometimes family might not know what to say, so they just don't say anything at all. And in that moment, it was a connection. And those connections give you hope. And those connections are still in our lives today. So Evelyn Wald, who will be doing our candlelight ceremony, um, went out of her way to make that connection with a stranger that day that has last, left a lasting impact in our lives. And so, um, you know, when I think back to the start of the foundation um, 12 years ago, my, my dad really wanted to start September 10th, an evening of hope, healing, and remembrance. Today is Worldwide Suicide Prevention Day, and he wanted to do something that would bring people together, provide that chance where we can remember those that we've lost and remember our own journeys and struggles and, the, and overcoming them and the resiliency that comes with it. And I remember thinking, that sounds like an awful idea. And so, you know, there's, it's hard, right? Like in those moments, I was like, that seems like it's gonna be really hard for me to show up at that event. And what I realized was on my drive from Philadelphia is that I really dreaded it, right? Um, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how many people would actually come out to an event like that. And what I found when I left was just feeling inspired, feeling that hope that comes with it. All of us in this room have been touched by suicide in some kind of way. And in events like this, they are hard still, but it reminds us that we're not alone on our journey, that there are people out there who care, who want to lend that listening ear, who want to hear stories of our loved ones and want to remember them for the people that they are. It's about building that connection, and that's why we start with that community dinner. And we're so grateful to Zach Lorber and the entire State College Area School District Culinary Arts Program for allowing us that opportunity to come together. So let's give it one more time for Zach. <laughs> He's already committed to coming back for next year, too. So mark it on your calendar, September 10th, 2024. Zach Lorber and State College School District will be here again. Um, and, but, um, and we're so thankful for American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, who continues to support this event as well. So while they couldn't be here today, um, they were able to provide um, our cookies and desserts. They were able to also provide some financial backing to be able to make this possible. So thank you, AFSP. <laughs> I 
And so, you know, when we think about um, my sister, I often think about her just vibrant personality. She had the brightest smile in the world and this infectious laugh that just rippled through the rooms and environments that she was in. She also had this confidence about her, and I remember being the younger sister and always looking up and being like, I wish I had a little bit of that. She was the one that was outgoing, where I was the one that was more internally excited for things. And, um, and so, you know, she was somebody that I admired, that I looked up to, that I wanted to be just like. And when we think about the foundation and where we're at today, none of this would be if it weren't for her. She journaled every single day of her life, starting from when she was really little all the way through. And in those journals, she wrote about those things that she wanted to do and bring into our community. Places where young people could come together and do art and music and creative expression. Places where there were drum circles and um, connections that were happening. And um, we've taken all of that and really built upon it to make Jana Marie Foundation what it is today. And, um, and so, you know, there's not a day that goes by where I don't remember Jana. Um, but there's also not a day where I, that goes by where I'm not grateful for the time that we got to spend with her and the inspiration that she left behind uh, for making this and what it is. So um, I'm really, you know, uh, excited for tonight. Um, I don't think that's the right word, but um, just, you know, this event, like I said, is about hope, it's about healing, it's about remembrance. And one of the things that made it so special that very first time and that continues to do so is the amazing talent that comes each and every year to this event. Our speakers who, who are sharing stories of resiliency and who are reminding us how we can take those next step forwards no matter what it is that we face in life. Our amazing performers from Center Dance that always um, just grace us with their, with their abilities um, to move and to share stories through the music and movement that they do. And from our amazing musicians <laughs> who um, continue to support this event every year. I think Biscuit Jam has been here almost every one of our events. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it is really all of you that make this event so special. And so without further ado, I'm going to um, come off the stage. I think you guys are next. So I'm gonna welcome Center Dance on out. So thank you. When you're walking in the winter with the snow beneath your feet, when you feel the cold and shiver And the light streams through the trees Put a heavy coat around you And I just wish it could be me And stay warm And I've been dreaming of you Almost every night then I wake up, you're not there by my side When I come back, I'll give you my love And I hope that you've not given up Cause I've been trying everything But I can only sing to stay warm If I see you in the summer, would you lie in the sun with me? Cause I've been living in the darkness, I've been searching for some peace. When the clouds are gone above us, we wouldn't even need to stay warm. I've been dreaming of you almost every night Then I wake up, you're not there by my side When I come back, I'll give you my
Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing your talents with us tonight. All right. So before we continue, I do want to um, let you know that we do have Center for Community Resources here. So one of the big things that Jana Marie Foundation does is make sure that people are aware of the different resources that are available in our community. Um, so we, um, at last July, um, so they announced a new number, 988, um, nationally, which is a suicide prevention and crisis lifeline number. So anybody who may be experiencing a mental health crisis can now um, just more easily ex access care through that three-digit number, which is so important. And beyond that, we have uh, local resources here in our community that are also available to lend that listening ear. And C Center for Community Resources, sometimes called CCR, is just one example of those. And so we are very grateful for CCR for being here this evening. They have set a table outside on the back patio. So if at any point you do need to talk to somebody or just want to learn more about the resources that are available in our community, they are available for anybody to tap into. So. Um, thank you to, to Kimberly and the entire team for being here to support the event. So I do want to welcome Cassandra Barr up to uh, the, the stage as well. Um, so Cassandra's from Active Minds World Campus and really excited to have her here joining us tonight. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for coming out tonight and showing support. Whether you're here because you've lost someone from suicide or maybe you're a survivor for an attempted suicide or you're just here because you want to show support to our community and show that you care. No matter what your reasoning is, I appreciate you being here. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Cassandra and I am a survivor of attempted suicide. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Bear with me. <laughs> You see, I struggled with being accepted amongst my peers. I wasn't quite popular, but not truly an outcast. I did cheerleading, and that was a sport that was such a positive outlet for me. But I still struggled with anxiety and depression and being a victim of ongoing bullying. By age 15, I experienced my first trauma. I was raped at a party with kids much older than me. Drugged at some camp party, and the cheerleaders that I cheered with threw me in the back of a truck with two men whom I did not know. I tried to drop out of college, or school after that incident, though my mom wouldn't let me. So she decided to homeschool me um, before transferring from Belfont to State College. And by the age of 17, I experienced my second trauma. There was four of us who decided to do some pills and just hang out. And eventually, four of us had fallen asleep but only three of us woke up. 
And that same year, I attempted suicide. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Before I graduated high school, I almost didn't make it. I didn't realize I was depressed. I didn't realize that my substance abuse was a direct result of untreated and underlying trauma. Research shows that in America, suicide is the second leading cause of death in ages 10 to 34 years old. While it is the most leading cause of death in Americans, it is also the most preventable. Preventing suicide comes down to all of us, all of you. And preventing suicide, like I said, comes down to all of us, all of you. And it is possible, I just didn't know it at the time. Because over 10 years ago, you see, I just decided I'd to try to take my own life. And as I look back, it's not necessarily that I wanted to die. It's just that I didn't want to live the life that I was currently living. So in my eyes, years of battling with anxiety, depression, PTSD, drug addiction, and feeling of hopelessness was going to end. I just wanted the pain to go away. But it was in those final moments that I had a family member call me completely out of blue to check, on it, check in on me. They had no idea that I was moments from taking away my life. I took that as a sign from God that I still had a purpose. <laughs> wow, I didn't think this was going to be as hard as it is. <laughs> I was still meant to keep on living. Now, although the pain was unbearable and I wanted it to stop, I felt a sense of hope that one phone call saved my life. It was after that phone call that I got the help that I needed. I had a support system, a system that knew how to care, how to listen, and how to act in those next suicidal moments. And they're the reason that I'm here today. Because with the right tools, the right resources, and the people around you, life can absolutely be worth living. Hope is attainable. Almost every person that I've ever talked to that survived a suicide attempt tells me that within the moments between life and death is instant regret. Studies indicate that almost every suicidal crisis is temporary. So if we could just reach out to those individuals in those moments of crisis, we can save lives. I know that's why you all have shown up tonight, because each and every one of you know the impact you have on our society and within our community. We all don't need to be mental health care professionals. We just need to steer people in the right direction to get the help that they need. Today, I'm the president of a chapter called Active Minds through Penn State. Active Minds is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to promoting mental health. As president, my goal is to educate, advocate, and empower my fellow peers in regards to mental health. I'm also a junior majoring in psychology, and when I graduate, I intend on furthering my studies to receive my doctorate of psychology to become a licensed clinical psychologist. And today, I challenge you to ask somebody why they're here tonight. Get to know their stories and see the impact that it has. Your stories matter and you matter. Thank you. Thanks for sharing, darling. do some hootie in the blowfish this is a good song and if you know it you're welcome to sing along because that's therapeutic too come on with a little love and some tenderness rise above what a wind rise above the banks with a little peace and some harmony Take a walk together 
take back hand because I hand for you. I've got a hand for you. What wrong with you? Oh, yesterday, so you stand there. Head was down, eyes are red. No, can we touch hand? To get open, let me see you smile. Yeah. Take a walk together, yeah. walk the road well because I hand for you, I got a hand for you. Yeah. Walk the road with you, let me run with you. Just hold my hand, watch you to hold my hand. I'll take you to the place where you can be with my hand. Anything you want to be, because I want to love you. Best that, best that I can. See, I was wasting, I was wasting time. Thought about your problems, I. Thought about your cries. I stood ho 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 and I screamed out. Don't wanna be a part of problems. Don't wanna be a part of your crowd, no. But I hand for you. I got a hand for you. What wrong with you? So let me run with you. Just hold my hand. Watch me hold my hand. I'll take you to the place where you can be with my hand. Anything you want to be, yes. I want to love you. Best that, best that I can. Yeah. Want you to hold my hand, hold my hand. Want you to hold my hand, hold my hand. I'll take you to the promise land with my hand. Maybe we can't change the world, but I wanna love you best that, best that I can. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. That's Kelly. I'm kind of short. Hi, my name is Andrea. Thank you to Marissa and Evelyn for inviting me to speak tonight and thank you to the Jana Marie Foundation for hosting this event. I've written some reflections based on my new role as a suicide survivor. It is called Out of the Darkness. Not an original title, but when I received this bracelet from the Jana Marie group, I felt it summed up how I'm feeling right now. Jerry, my significant other and best friend, shot himself in the head sometime during the night of June 30th, a Friday. We had plans for dinner together on Saturday evening, and when he didn't show up, I figured one of his demons had taken priority and I'd hear all of his apologies the next day. Well, the next day I got a call from his boss saying he hadn't been at work either Saturday or Sunday. With a sick feeling in my stomach, I drove to his house and called 911. The police found him in his basement shower. At the time, I was so numb, I didn't know what to do. I called my sister, who immediately drove from Philadelphia to be with me. I didn't know how I would make it to the next day or the next. My sister has suffered her own grief and loss. Her 31-year-old husband was killed by an uninsured hit-and-run driver. At that moment, all of his and my sister's dreams were shattered. He didn't want his life to end, and it was cruelly taken away from him. 
He didn't make that choice. When people say the survivors of suicide grieve in a different way than others, it's true. We have the deep feelings of loss and sadness, but also have to suffer the feelings of guilt, shock, and the stigma associated with suicide. We talked about this at our most recent Jan and Marie meeting. Did our last words cause this? What could I have done better? Did I miss the clues? What kind of girlfriend am I if my boyfriend kills himself? The difference, though, and this brings me around to the title of my reflection, is that death for most people is not a choice. People die for so many reasons, some of them expected, most of them not. Suicide victims have made that choice. Most likely they were not in a healthy state of mind when they chose to end their life, but that's what they did. It was their decision. Out of the darkness is a phrase that can have several interpretations. Bringing the stigma of suicide out of the darkness. Helping those with suicide thoughts out of the darkness. But for me, I'm going to move out of the darkness with strength and a new sense of purpose. Jerry is at peace now, and I will live out of the darkness. After many horrible weeks, a leave of absence from work, and the loving support of my family and friends, a new feeling started to emerge. I feel like a different person. I'm moving forward with a positive attitude. Part of that is evidenced in my standing in front of all of you and reading my words. Never in a million years would I have thought about doing something like this before. Am I like this every day? No. I miss him a lot. Jerry and I had plans for the future. My bucket list included him being there, experiencing it with me. Many people tell me I'm a strong person. In some ways I am, but I'm also good at faking it. Not everybody is. Everyone's situation is different. But for me, I still have a lot of life left to live. Jerry took his own life. I won't let him take mine. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Valerie Stapleton, I'm 24 years old, and I graduated from Penn State with a degree in philosophy. My time at Penn State is where I met my friend Peter. Peter was a year older than me and super bright. He had a lot of charisma, and he was known for his sense of humor. Peter could make anyone laugh, and he had a wit like no other. To this day, he is still the funniest person that I've ever met. He had a lot of talents, like cooking and fencing, music and video games. He, had a, he was really skilled in a lot of different areas. And I always felt very comfortable in his presence. At the time, I struggled heavily with depression, and I heard in passing that Peter had similar issues with depression in high school. I was always too scared to have a connecting conversation with him about it, um, because I felt weird bringing it up. He claimed that his troubles were in the past, so I thought he might be able to give me some advice. But unfortunately, in August of 2019, he died by suicide. I really regret not being open with him. I think it was a missed opportunity for healing, and I'm left with so many what ifs. Like, what if I had been brave enough to connect with him then? Maybe he wouldn't have felt so alone. Since his death, it's been my goal to build stronger connections with the people in my life. And I've had to get creative with finding ways to cope, because I don't know many people who also knew Peter. So my grief is mainly carried alone. And one day, I really wanted to see his face again, as I'm sure a lot of you can understand. Um, so I decided to draw him. I just wanted to give him a moment more of life on that paper. So a few hours later, after having no art lessons, uh, I saw his smiling face staring back at me. And that's one of the paintings that I did recently in watercolor. 
it didn't start out that way. <laughs> but I kept drawing him, and each new portrait, the image got clearer, and I felt closer to him each time. It was really as if he was like peering at, through the paper right at me, and that brought me a lot of comfort. The days that I spent drawing felt like I was just shedding this aching pain from around my heart, and it was really therapeutic. It made me feel so connected with him that I wanted to share that with people who knew him too, so I reached out and offered them portraits as well, and that opened up doors for me to connect with his, friend, with his family and other friends. And I realized that we just aren't meant to grieve and heal alone. The, those connections really made the weight of pain a lot easier to carry. That's why now I'm committed to being more open and motivated to speak on this issue. I really believe that connections can heal and connection starts with authenticity. The better we know and understand ourselves, the stronger our relationships can be. I learned a lot about myself when I was drawing him. It gave me a focal point to explore my own heart and mind. You know, it takes hours upon hours to, to do a portrait like that, so it's a lot of time to just kind of meditate with myself. I never thought that I could draw people, but I surprised myself and I discovered the value of my emotions in the process. I learned about my grief and the roots of it. I found that love is really the bedrock that it emerges from and that I have intense care for the people in my life. I found bravery to fight my own battle and the inspiration to make different choices now. I wanna grow closer with the people around me so I'm continually overcoming that fear of vulnerability. I'm learning to be okay with honesty and transparency so that others can feel safe around me and their authenticity too. I'm certainly not afraid of having those kinds of serious conversations anymore. I learned that grounding myself in the pain can take me to the other side of it. All the love and hurt and care is still there, but I can hold it a little better now. To hurt and to feel the pain and all of the emotions that come with loss are what help me live a fuller life because those feelings are a part of me just as my greatest joys are. Embracing these feelings really makes me feel whole again. I think that art is a really safe way to approach this pain because it opens us up to curiosity. A small form of creative expression could lead you to unexpected places, so I encourage you to try. Art can take on many forms, and like Bob Ross once said, there are no mistakes, there are only happy accidents. And Peter loved Bob Ross, so I had to include that. Whether we're hurting from these thoughts ourselves or we've lost someone to that hurt, we're all carrying a pain with us. It's not about removing the pain, but it's about uncovering it enough to see what's underneath and what we need. Sometimes that's external support and sometimes that's self-care. The point is, the more we learn our inner landscape, the better equipped we are to meet those needs. Art is my way of tending to that inner world and there are fruits to bear when we give it our attention. We learn our strengths and we see where we need grace and I think we all deserve that kind of gentleness on this journey. So thank you for being here. Your life is very important and I hope we all learn to care for ourselves so that we can better care for each other and that may we be gentle along the way. Thank you. We're going to do an original song by Kelly. You want to tell them about it at all? Kelly? It's called Pep Talk, and I wrote it for anybody who might need one. Here you go. I wish you could know the things I know you can do I wish you could clearly see Strength I see in you Wish for you the peace I've seen When you open up the door I have flown beside you 
Will you let your spirit soar? Oh, what a ride Oh, what a ride Let your spirit soar, my friend Oh, what a ride Tell you what I think of you Sometimes it's hard to see You do know what's good in you Be what's good in me Oh, but you would say It's the truth So what you can't ignore I have flown inside you Will you let your spirit soar? Oh, what a ride Let your spirit soar, my friend Oh, what a ride You can see, you can know It's what I find in you Well, I'm not here Sing this song You know what you must do Take a look, look at yourself And know oh, This is true Yeah, yeah Tell you what I think of you Sometimes it's hard to see You do know what's good in you Be what's good in me Oh, but you will say It's the truth So what you can't ignore For I have flown inside you When you let your spirit soar And oh, what a ride Oh, what a ride Let your spirit soar, my friend Oh, what a ride Oh, what a ride Oh, what a ride Let your spirit soar, my friend Oh, what a ride Yeah, yeah There's your pep talk. There you go. Hi, everybody. My name is Scott McKenzie. Um, first, uh, let me thank everybody in the room so far for the ride I have had in the last hour. Um, from the dance performance through everybody's speeches, I've been on quite a ride myself. And I'm gonna do my best to carry on that pep talk here. Um, I want a link to that song later, I wanna keep that. <laughs> um, I think about my brother every day. My brother is still with us, but my brother uh, suffers from a condition called chronic fatigue syndrome, from an injury he sustained many years ago. Every day he wakes up with pain and exhaustion. And I can't imagine what that's like for him. So when he and I have had conversations that basically come down to if he did not have children and family that depended on him, he probably would have checked out by now. I do my best to understand that and accept that honestly, if there's anybody I would not judge for it, it would be him. But he persists every day for the people that depend on him. And the unexpected result of that is that his living for others provides him the joy of his life. What he gets to do for his kids, for his family members, makes those days of suffering worthwhile to him. 
I have had my own struggles with mental health issues. I am a survivor of a suicide attempt. Thankfully, it has been many years in my past, and I don't really feel much of a connection to the emotions that I had then. That said, there are still times where I have minutes, hours, days, where I'm lost, where all I feel is pain and despair. And the strange thing is, I know I can't do anything to fix that. I can't take care of myself and fix that. But what I can do is the same thing that my brother does. I can take care of others. I have for years lived by a very, very simple motto. Be a candle. That's it. That's all any of us has to do in this life, is to be a candle. And I'm going to ask you all to participate in a little experiment with me here for a second. I want you to take a look around the room and see all the people that are sitting in here with you. And then I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to picture that same room with all those same people in the middle of the night with no light coming in through these windows, no string lights above us, just darkness. And then I want you to picture in your own hands a single candle with a single flame on the top of it. Now that single flame can offer light to this room. Might not be the brightest light in the world, but it's going to be really bright right there for you, and it's still going to reach the corners of this room. Now I want you to imagine the person next to you holding an unlit candle. And I want you to imagine reaching your candle over and lighting their candle. It is the easiest thing in the world. It doesn't do anything to take away from your candle, and it is so very, very easy to light one for them. And now there's twice as much light in the room. And now each of you does that for two other people, and then four other people. And suddenly within minutes, this room is full of lit candles, and every crack of this room is bathed in light. We can all pay that forward to each other. Now here's, here's the tricky part. Imagine your candle goes out. And then look around the room. My first reaction when I think of that is, that light is still there even without mine. But my next reaction is that there are so many people in this room that can reach their candle right back over to mine and light it again. It is that easy for them to lift us up. Now imagine that your candle went out in a room that didn't have any other candles in it. You'd be pretty desperate in that situation. But when you surround yourself with a world of other candles and you do your best to keep everyone else's candle lit, they're always going to be there for you too. I, in just the past few years alone, have lost over a dozen people to suicide. If we go back years prior to that, I can remember the first one back when I was 17. And in the many years since, I have known far too many people that have been lost to despair. But their light is still here. Everyone that they knew has the effects of their light in their world and pays it forward regularly. I have friends who write music or create art new friends that create art to keep alive people that they've lost. I have a friend who right now while we're at this event is actually doing a charity live stream on her Twitch page in memory of her father who passed from suicide. She is doing her best in his memory to pay forward and do her best to lift up more people in the world. We all get to do that with the people that we've lost but we don't have to wait for them to be lost to do it. We can all continue to pay that, that light forward into the world. So while I'm not able to take care of myself a lot of the time, taking care of others 
allows me to make sure that if someday my light goes out, it's still reaching farther than I could possibly imagine because my light connected another, which connected another, which connected another. And all of us can just do more and more to bring light into the world. And the better a place we make the world, the better equipped that world is to take care of us. I frequently run things like charity events or random acts of kindness for strangers. Any little thing you can think of that you can do for others. And on one hand, it is an altruistic thing. I love doing things for other people. But at the same time, it is an act of self-preservation. It is a defense mechanism. I take care of other people because I also need them to take care of me. And they're not two distinct thoughts. They're not mutually exclusive. Because the truth of the matter is, we're all the same. We can't exist alone, and a community can't exist without us. So the more we do to help each other, the more we do to help ourselves. And honestly, you're all doing it already. You're all here right now. The people who put the event on, the people who created the foundation that we're standing here for, the people who volunteered, we're all already doing it, and we're all doing what we can to help make the world a better place for each other and ourselves. So uh, thank you for the ride, and I hope the pep talk keeps you, keeps you pushing it. Thank you. I'm facing the wrong way, Marissa. It is always an honor to stand here. I've had the privilege of standing here, I believe, every year on September 10th. And I get excited. I use that word too, Marissa. Every time Marissa says, will you do September 10th? And I, I just can't wait to come. As I sat with you tonight, the inspiration from our speakers, our dancers, our musicians has been Incredible, incredible. I sat at the dinner table with Scott and knew that he was going to speak. And he said, I mentioned to Marissa that I'm going to say something about candles and lights. And am I going to steal Evelyn's thunder? And the truth is, you didn't steal my thunder. You created even greater thunder with that. Because how much more appropriate could it be that after you spoke, Scott, we have a candle lighting ceremony. And it would be awesome if we could do exactly what you said and extinguish all those lights, but you made it beautifully illustrative that we can see it in our minds and we will see it before our very eyes. I light this candle of hope and everyone tonight spoke about hope. This morning on my walk, I was thinking about H-O-P-E. And when I thought about tonight and I thought about hope, I thought, we need to hear. We need to hear each other's stories. 
when I thought about H, I thought about how we need to hold one another, to hold space for one another. When I thought about H, I thought about honoring. And tonight we honored the loved ones that have been lost by suicide. And we honored the gift of life from those who are still here and want to move forward with their life. When I thought about H, Kelly, I thought about hugs. <laughs> Kelly said she came tonight because she needed hugs. And hugs are very much a part of hope. And then I thought about the O. And I thought about how every time we come here, it's an opportunity for us to break the silence, to share our stories, and to be reminded that we're not alone and we're part of a community. And when I thought of O, I thought about open. Opening up our minds, opening up our hearts. That's what this is all about. P. P is about presence. And not only that you are all present here, but the presence of our loved ones who are still the lights that shine within us. When I thought about P, I thought about not only being present, but also about problems and pain and how unless we bring them forth, we can't deal with them and we can't help one another. And when I thought about E, I thought about embracing. I thought about encouraging. And I thought about what I can't see on my paper. <laughs> entering into. Val talked about entering into our pain. We talked about re-entering back into the world of life. Tonight, there is no doubt in my mind that we have kindled again the light of hope, not only in this place, but out into the world. I was sitting there wishing that I had a pocket full of candles to give to everybody. So when you go home, most of us have a candle. If you have nothing more than just that little birthday candle, it's a beautiful example. It used to be that people carried matches. That doesn't happen anymore. I tell you to light a match. But we are the light of hope that will go out into the world again tonight. I had to see which candle was which. Healing. That's always been an interesting word for me, healing. Because a lot of times when we're sick and we think of healing, we think about being cured. Well, you can't get cured once you've made a decision to take your life and completed that. But healing can happen for those of us that are left behind. And as we heard earlier, healing can happen in a moment. A person reaching out and calling can cause us to change the path of our life and begin to heal. Healing is about, first of all, recognizing that something's wrong. <laughs> healing is about acknowledging that we're in pain and then seeking help, which can be a lot harder than we think. But when we seek that help, the help is there. And maybe we don't even have to seek it because someone comes up to us and says, you don't look well. You don't look like you're having a good day. And we can begin that process of healing from whatever it is that we're aching and hurting from. Tonight is a night of hope. Tonight is a night of healing.
And I finally light the candle of remembrance. And tonight, as so many speakers have said, everyone is here because in some way your life has been touched by suicide or you're here to support another. And we remember. We remember all those people who are so vital and so important in our lives and their lights do still shine and they never go out. And they live on in and through each and every one of us as we remember them. There is nothing more wonderful than to hear my mother's name mentioned, or Peter's name, or Jerry's name, or Jana Marie's name, to remind us that they're not forgotten, that many others besides us remember. Marissa started the evening off by surprising me, by sharing the story about a stranger. <laughs> and I am so grateful that I was able to be that stranger and meet Nancy in her garden that day. And the relationship that's blossomed since then for all of us is incredible. So I encourage you tonight, certainly for the people that we know, that might be going through difficult times, it's hard enough. But maybe you might smile at a stranger. You might say something to a stranger that will make a difference. You might indeed save someone's life. That's what this is all about tonight. We can't bring back the lives of the people that loved us and we loved and lost. But we can honor them and we can carry the legacy on. And we can join with the Jana Marie Foundation and say, suicide is preventable. Preventable. I wore this shirt tonight because I had the privilege of walking in AFSP's overnight walk this year. It was in Washington, D.C. It started at 8 p.m. And we walked through the night, thousands of walkers. And as we walked, total strangers were walking beside each other, sharing our stories. We laughed together. We cried together. We wondered whether we'd make the 16.8 miles, but we did. And we did it all to remember our loved ones and with the hope to prevent suicide. Tonight, tonight our minds and our hearts were illumined, not only by these candles, but by the stories and by everyone who's present here, by the dance, by the music, and most importantly, by that gift of hope. And so as you go forth tonight, your light is shining. And if you're feeling hopeless, know that there's all of us that are holding hope for you. I heard recently that helplessness and hopelessness is the number one predictor of suicide. So if we can offer another a helping hand, if we can offer someone the gift of hope, we begun that healing process. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for holding hope and take that hope and that light out into a world and we will illumine the darkness. Thank you. So we've been asked to play uh, Lean On Me, and we ask you if you'll sing along because... We you guys know this song. Let's sing it together.
some times in our lives we, we all have, have pain, we all have sorrow. sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always two. I'll be your friend I'll help you carry on For it won't be long I'll roll and lead Somebody to lead on Swallow your pride If I have things You need to borrow for it won't be long till I'm gonna leave somebody to lead on lead on me come only brother when you need a hand we all need somebody to lead on I just might have a problem that you don't understand we all Strong I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long. I'll leave somebody to lead on. You got to come, holy brother. When you need a hand, we all need somebody to lead on. Cause I just might. Problem that you don't understand. We all need somebody to lead on, lead on me. Please swallow your pride If I have things You need to buy for No one can give Those are the things That you don't let show You got to call on your brother When you need a hand We all need somebody to lean on I just might have a problem you don't understand. We all need somebody to lean on, lean on me. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry our world for you only long, till I won't need somebody to lean. I want you to call me. You got to call me. You better call me. Call me. Call me. me. And here's Marissa, you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's always so hard to close after Evelyn, but um, thank you all so much for coming out tonight. Um, as you know, this is September 10th, Worldwide Suicide Prevention Awareness Day. But it doesn't just end with today. This is something, a message that we need to take with us each and every day moving forward. Um, and so, you know, there's been so many stories that were shared tonight um, that just remind us that importance to hold on for hope, to hope, but also provide that hope to others. Be that merchant of hope. 
That's one of the sayings for one of the educational programs that we run, Question, Persuade, Refer, Suicide Prevention Training, which is an evidence-based course. Um, and I just want to end with one more quick story um, uh, about that course in particular. Um, so this course teaches you three simple, simple steps that anybody can use to help save a life. To ask the question, to persuade by giving them that listening ear, yeah. and to know those different resources that are out there in the community. We offer these courses every single month at no cost so that people can learn how to just have a little more confidence with these conversations. And in June, um, we had offered a course and the individuals were very grateful for having it but didn't know quite how it would pertain to their lives. And just a couple of weeks after that course, we received a text message from an individual who had recently gone through it. They were driving down a road where there was a bridge and on the bridge there was a young person who was standing looking over onto a highway. They decided to stop that day to ask that question. To, they noticed that something seemed different, that something didn't seem quite right. And they had the confidence to act. In asking the question, they learned that that young person had intended on jumping and taking their life. And they stayed with that person, lending that listening ear and being there for them, helping them to get to a safe space and making a connection to those resources, um, calling 911 and having the police and, and a police social worker come out on site so that that individual could get help. What that person did that day was be that merchant of hope. They recognized that something just seemed off. They had the confidence to act and they made that connection. Throughout all of the speakers that tonight, we heard how important connection is connection to ourself in knowing and identifying our own needs, and connection to the people around us. And that's really what suicide prevention is. It's being able to be there for someone, doing those small acts of kindness, being willing to be vulnerable ourselves and courageous in asking those tough questions, and then really being there for someone. We don't need to know all of the answers. We don't know, need to know all of the steps to get somebody that help. We just need to be willing to be there with them, to sit with them, even if it's in silence, because that's what builds that connection. That's what demonstrates that empathy. And so thank you so much for being here today, because this is about connection. This is about community and reminding us all that we are not alone on our journey and that there are a world of people out there that we can lean on and, and be next to and that will listen to us non-judgmentally and walk with us until we're ready to regain that hope ourselves. So thank you again for coming. Please remember there are resources um, here um, around the room. Grab them if you have any questions or anything, please see um, myself or where CCR is still out there as well. So thank you. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, darling. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. We're gonna whisper words of wisdom. Let it be